atheists, they're always looking for what is the reason for this and that. But if it's a randomness, why are you looking for wisdom behind it? It's randomness. Because they know deep down that everything has a purpose. Yeah, because if you believe there's no purpose, because if I believe we came from a randomness and we believe we came from blind matter, me punching someone is just like a tree falling on a car. Because everything's random, you know? But we know that it's not the case. Deep down, we know everything's been programmed. We have our own choice. And that can come either from knowledge or no knowledge. The one makes sense, logical, rational, knowledge, and knowledge is an attribute which does not exist by itself. It has to be exist in something else. And knowledge is not enough, ability, you know? That's why Allah also mentioned Hal Ata al Insan. Is it not a time? Hal Ata al Insan Hinu mina Dehri, Lemi Yakun Shi Amatkura. Is it not a time for a man to think? There was once upon a time, you were not even a word of mentioning. Now you can hear, you can see, you can talk. Blind matter cannot give you that. Blind, if, I, if, I, if I don't have 10 pounds, can I give it to you? No. So if a blind matter have knowledge, none of that, how can I give you some, all of this? That's why you know this. That's why Allah always tells us to reflect. And believe in God so also is well rooted within us. Well rooted within us. However, our society diverges. You know, that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. Qul siru fil ard. Travel around the earth. See how, the, look at Allah's creation. You know, we, how many times we walk in, have you been Westfield? Westfield, yeah? You look at Westfield, so how beautiful it is. But it's no more beautiful than this creation. When the sun sets in, the sun rising, order. But we say they can, but there's no creator. That doesn't make any sense. That's why believing the creator, knowing there's a creator, is not true. Likewise, it goes in line with our sound reasoning. Make sense? Yeah. Alhamdulillah. You know, also, how I can make the point stronger, you know, what's happening around the world now, we're talking about it. We are drowning in darkness. No doubt about that. You know, Islam, Prophet Muhammad, who couldn't read and write, he lived 1,400 years ago. Yes? Who couldn't read and write? He came with the legislation, I'm going to demonstrate to you how perfect it is. And you should think about it, how man that existed 1,400 years ago in the middle of desert who couldn't, who couldn't read and write, he came with this legislation which is better than the people who studied in the best universities around the world. Let me tell you what are this legislation. Islam came to preserve five things. Islam came to preserve five things. Islam came to preserve religion. What does that mean? In Islam, it's very important to worship the correct God. Not your desires, not the matter, not the moon, not the trees, no, the creator, yes? Because when you don't know worship the true creator, we can see the outcome of it now. The outcome of it, we are living in darkness. Because why? We start following our desires. So you can wake up, you think, I'm, I feel like I'm a lamppost, but I'm trapped in a human body. Yeah. And now you cannot refute him, because why? You, we already opened the door. Whatever you're going to feel, regardless of how you're going to feel, maybe that's who you are. Like there's a guy, he said, he, 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 uh, uh, oh, there's a woman in America. She said she feels she's a rabbit, but she's been trapped in human body. It's crazy. Why? Because when you have no God, you start flowing with desires. That's the first one. So religion, uh, uh, religion, the true religion. Second one, Islam came to protect intellect. What does that mean? Anything that harms the intellect is forbidden Islam. Okay? Thirdly, Islam came to protect wealth. You with me, yeah? We said religion, first one, intellect, sick, uh, thirdly, wealth. That's why interest and gambling is forbidden. Interest and gambling is forbidden Islam. Islam came to preserve life. That's what, when you commit suicide or killing people unjustly, it's forbidden, don't record it. It's forbidden, yes? It's, uh, it's haram, it's forbidden Islam. Likewise, Islam came to preserve marriage and lineage. That's why fornication and adultery is forbidden. These five things Islam came to protect, not just protect it, likewise there's a, there's a punishment behind it. Why? Because when we do not protect these rules, we break our own society. Let me ask you, alcohol, is it good for us or bad for us? Alcohol. Alcohol is not bad for you. Huh? Yes, it's bad for you. It's bad for us. It, it, it's, it's well established. Alcohol is bad for us individually. Oh, I've uh, read that uh, some alcohol in moderation can be beneficial. No, scientists debunk that. Uh, like they used to drink beer because the water wasn't good. You know, in the Middle Ages, that the water was 
Yeah. No, no, no scientists, they said scientists agreed even a small amount of alcohol is bad for you. Yeah, because yeah. you know, alcohol you know, mash up your, your kidney, you know, and a majority of crime because of alcohol. Okay, alcohol is bad for us. Interest, where is there interest? Was, uh, a study where it showed that uh, a moderation of like red wine will um, reduce a um, uh, risk of heart attack. I'll show you, uh, 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 is alcohol good for us? Watch this. Even though there's an element of the seeds in it, fundamentally it's bad. Because we can't look, no amount, look, no amount of alcohol is good for you. Health global study says, global study. Yeah. So even, even if there is some good in it, the, like he said, the good over uh, the, uh, the the bad overweigh the good. So let me just go. So alcohol is bad for us individually and collectively. Gambling is good for uh, is bad for us collectively and individually. Fornication, adultery is bad for us, destroy families and so on. Yeah, and all of this evil, uh, 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 likewise uh, uh, drugs and all of that. All this evil goes back to the most evil. When you worship someone beside God, or you turn away from God's teaching. So these five things will destroy societies and destroy us individually and collectively. Islam comes and put a rules against it. The question you ask yourself, if is how this man come with this perfect way of life to protect us individually and collectively? Who couldn't read and write? On the other hand, we have politicians who study around the world in the best universities, yet they cannot resolve the problems we're living in. Because that man, Prophet Muhammad, who, ex who existed 1,400 years ago, the legislation he came with is from the Creator who knows about you and I in details. Because us, yes, generally speaking, we know what is good and what is bad. But in details, no one knows what is good for us and bad except the Creator. And guess what? And that's why majority of times, those who are very hostile to Islam, either are ignorant about Islam, or those who are in power, or those who are making money from the suffering of the people. Because no doubt, some people make money from gambling. Some people make money from alcohol, some people make money from drugs, some people make money of uh, interest. But what is happening, the, the evil overweight the good. So those who are making money from the suffering of the people, majority of times, what they do, because they're rich, they use their money to make Islam look bad. And this is what's happening now through the media. Even though Islam is the best way of life, the best way of life for every, all of us and every society. Again, I showed you some reasoning why there's a creator. I'll show you this man who couldn't read and write. He came with a perfect way of life. This man, because why is a messenger of people? Make sense? Let me ask you something. Imagine in the house, may Allah forbid. Imagine in the house today, and there's a fire. You are surrounded with the fire. You wake up, may Allah forbid, and there's a fire everywhere. You try, to, you try your best to save yourself, but you couldn't. And you gave up, you say, you know what, I'm dying. I came and I saved your life. What would you say to me? Would you remember me all the time for saving your life? Probably not. Of course, I saved your life, bro. You're going to be very grateful to me. But guess what? I never gave you life. So why are you not grateful and remember who gave your life for free? Yeah, you see? That's why, you know, that's why what is worship? Worship, worship, not because the Creator is in need of it. We are in need of it. Not because it's in need of it, because you deserve it. You know, you know what is crazy? Look at the oxygen that we have, in, out, breathing in, out. If you go to hospital and you need, you need the oxygen, they will charge you for it. And you get in it for free. That's why we should be grateful to our Creator. But the question you ask ourselves, if you want to buy a gift for your mother, would you buy a gift that you love or your mother loves? That she loves. Likewise, if you want to be grateful and worship the Creator, we should worship Him and show Him love the way He loves. Not the way we love because the way he love is objective and absolute. the way we love is subjective that's why the creator said the process in the make sense that we have to understand also anytime we can live this life and we will die that's what allah challenged the people with the death this life we're not here forever this life is a test allah tests us look hitler he did many evil but he got away with it no he didn't get away with it that's why day of judgment is logical as well it's rational because all of us, we yearn, we yearn for justice. 
naturally. And you know, it, it also goes back to what the Prophet Muhammad said. Every newborn is born with a fitrah. What, the, what, the, what does it mean fitrah? Mean that we're born to believe in the Creator, and we're born that we know oppression is wrong. So I give you an example of that. You see, if, if a child, imagine you have a brother that's two years old or three years old, and you go hit him. Don't do that if you have a brother. I'm just saying like that. And you go hit him. Your brother start crying. If your mom or your father comes and hits you back, your brother stop crying because he believes the justice has been established. Where did he get that? That justice has to be established for him to, to stop crying. Because something within us inherently that we love justice. Even there was a, there was an experience or a study was done at the university. They took children from different parts of the world. They took children from different parts of the world. They, and they spent 1.9 million on this project. They came to conclusion, children, if you leave them without any prior education, they will grow up believing God. And not any God believe in the Creator and there's a purpose. And that goes in line with what the Prophet Muhammad said 1,400 years ago. You know, if it makes sense to you, you know, that's what Islam, Islam told me to create and to believe in the Creator, to worship your Creator. But if I said to you, if I saved your life, you will thank, you will remember me. But what about your life for free? Your eyes, you will never exchange your eyes with no money. Because your eyes is more valuable than anything. You know, that's what Prophet Muhammad taught us. If someone is born blind in a spaceship upon that, there is no reward from except paradise. Because the eyes, you don't see family, you don't see God's creation. When you have no eyes, you're blind, you become a burden upon society. You have no privacy, you must start helping you. So all these blessings that the Creator has given us, you have to be grateful to Him. And the biggest crap against the Creator, when He turned away, away from Him. So it's your chance to accept Islam and worship God correctly, or you turn away from it. But no doubt, you can see the Creator's mercy, the rain. Also, you can see His anger. The same rain can turn it into destruction. That's why based upon the Creator's mercy, create paradise. And based upon His anger, create the hellfire. But based upon justice. That's why I gave you a choice for you to accept or reject. But on the day of judgment, don't blame no one except yourself.